Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So, do you have a typewriter in your collection that is missing a key cosmetic part? Well, I have this Voss Model 50 typewriter. You've seen it before on this channel, probably. And it's missing the ribbon cover. Uh, this typewriter is made just after World War II, and it has a Bakelite kind of plastic body panels. And the original ribbon cover was kind of a slopey, two-tiered shaped thing. And I'm sure these got broken a lot because of the brittleness of Bakelite. Well, this typewriter was going to be used as a parts machine at the local typewriter repair shop here in Albuquerque. And it got rescued and by my friend Kevin, and he gave it to me. So I decided, well, I could live with this the way it is. Or, yes, that's right, I could make a homemade ribbon cover. Stay tuned. I'd like to preface this by saying, first of all, I'm not a master woodworker by any means. My point in showing you this is not to brag about how I made a ribbon cover, it's to encourage you that you could do the same thing. So a lot of the parts for this ribbon cover are bought at my local hobby shop or hardware store. In fact, all of them are. The most important thing about making a ribbon cover for your typewriter is it is cosmetic, but it also helps to protect the machine, especially like the ribbon spools. And it provides a little bit of dust protection. I mean, obviously the segment is open, but it does provide a little bit more protection there. But mainly it's a cosmetic thing. It might actually help uh, dampen some of the sound of the machine somewhat. It's nice to have a ribbon cover, but you may not be able to find the right color of ribbon cover that matches your typewriter, or even the right model uh, that matches the shape of it. And so you might have to make a makeshift ribbon cover that does the job, but isn't really the same shape. Now this one is not the original shape. As I said earlier, it was kind of a sloped up halfway, came back, and then had a sloping part, kind of curved part that was raised up and kind of a gentle slope. It was really a nice looking uh, cover, obviously rather brittle, but this is my solution. It's kind of a cross between minimalism and just the ease of fabrication. And it's really just a wooden frame with a thin model aircraft plywood top. And it fits right on pretty easy. So taking off the ribbon cover, there's four metal studs here, 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 and there are holes in the lip of the uh, ribbon cover that the studs fit into. So it's really just a matter of designing it and building it so all those studs and holes line up like that, and it fits nice and snugly. So the cover is made from inch and a quarter by half inch poplar sticks. That's what the side pieces are all made of. There are some uh, 3 8 inch uh, square wooden pieces that are really like reinforcements in the corners here. And then the uh, top of it is just made from this thin 8 inch model aircraft ply with like 3 or 4 millimeters thick. Uh, and it's glued together with wood glue and a lot of sanding, really. Uh, the thing is, when you look at the uh, shape of it here, there is a lot of wood here that you can round off and make these corners and edges rounded. And uh, it's not a difficult thing to do. Obviously, a master woodworker could do a much better job than I did. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good, and I'm happy with it. Well, before you decide to design your own ribbon cover if your typewriter is missing one, you really need to see how it's going to mount. Keeping in mind, if you're making something simple out of wood like this, you're going to be using parts that are kind of straight, rectilinear, straight-sided, flat surfaces probably. So I was lucky enough on this particular design, there's this flat flange that goes around three sides of this rectangular opening, and that made an ideal place to mount the, uh, the base of this cover, especially since they have these four mounting pins already there. And looking at the width of the little circular molds that those mounting pins are mounted into, it was a natural choice to choose like half inch wide wood here because it just fits that perfectly. Um, and so the main thing was like the clearance between that half inch wide wood and for instance the edge of the ribbon spools. I had to carve out some of the wood here uh, so that the ribbon spools would easily clear. And also the middle 
tight bars, the tips of the type slugs were going to hit back here at the rest position, so I routed out a little slot here so there would be some clearance for these middle type bars at the rest position. Because when I originally did my testing with this before it was stained and finished, every time I would type one of those middle keys I'd hear a clank, clank as the key returned and it hit the wooden cover and made that wooden hollow sound. So a little bit of modification, something that didn't originally show up on my design sketches. Sometimes you don't really anticipate these problems uh, until they, you actually build a prototype, right? Now there's other ways of building a ribbon cover. I'm using the kinds of skills and materials that I'm most comfortable with, which is working with wood and s with simple hand tools and things. But you could get fancy and try to 3D print uh, one of these. You could design it and, uh, and print it out. That would work fine. I didn't want the appearance of a 3D printed ribbon, ribbon cover, mainly because the rough, uh, stringy texture just doesn't appeal to me. If anything, it would have had to been more like injection molded plastic, that kind of look. Or if you have access to, let's say, a machine shop or some kind of molding foundry that can mold you one from a design, from a CAD file or whatever, that would be cool too. I didn't have access to that. I didn't really want to mess with it. I'm happy with uh, using simple kinds of wood, the kind of wood you, you buy at a hobby shop or hardware store. It works fine for me. So that's why I chose these methods and these materials. You guys might choose something else. Well, my original idea was actually to try to match the black finish, this semi-matte, just below glossy Bakelite finish. And with the wood, I would have had to sand it down to roughly 800 grit. And then once the grain is all filled up, uh, I would have to spray it probably with a semi-matte kind of a finish. But Midway through sanding this and getting it really smooth, I started liking the grain pattern of the wood enough that I decided, you know, I don't really want to cover up that grain pattern. And I thought this kind of a cherry finish might go good with the dark black uh, typewriter appearance. So it's not close to what it was originally. There was no wood parts on this machine originally, but I think it's kind of cool. I turned it into a woody, right? It's the kind of technology that most anybody with simple hand tools and access to a hardware store can probably manage to do. What I did is I sketched some drawings for this in my sketchbook, uh, started measuring things real carefully, and finally laid out a pattern for how I wanted the uh, ribbon cover to look from up here. I did have to worry about a few things, like for instance, the carriage return lever. I have to worry about the clearance here below the tip of the handle here, and in the, the handle goes right in front of the front edge. So there's a few issues like that that I had to worry about, but hey, it seems to work fine and it doesn't hit the cover at all, so that's good. And also I had to worry about the clearance underneath the cover of the ribbon spools. Um, if I was going to make the cover any lower to make it clear the handle of the carriage return lever any better, it would also make it much closer to rubbing on the ribbon spools, and I didn't want to do that either. And of course, this wood is already pretty thin, and so it's sort of a trade-off between the clearance to the handle of the carriage return lever versus the clearance of the ribbon spools. And I think I got it good. It doesn't have any problems with rubbing or not having enough clearance, so that's good. Well, I went through several different iterations of design on this ribbon cover. I had some initial sketches here that I thought were pretty good, and then I got a little bit more exact in what actual parts I would be needing to use from the hardware store, and finally, even more exact, and then I sat down, measured carefully everything to get the top shape, the shape of the prof of the uh, layout of it, and then I had a scrap of cardboard, and I actually drafted this with my drafting tools and cut it out with a razor knife and used this as a template for cutting the piece of model aircraft plywood out for the top of it. So. Okay, as I said, this is not a perfect example of workmanship. Um, I originally, of course, was going to make it black, opaque, and so I had some glue marks 
where the side pieces glue onto the front piece right at that gap there. There's a little bit of glue that seeped out, wood glue on both sides, and I had to sand and sand and sand it, and there's still a little bit of that. The second thing is, after I decided to go away from a black finish to a wood finish, a, you know, a, a stain finish, I was going to get some cherry stain and stain this really super dark, and I made the mistake of buying cherry stain with polyurethane. Eh. So after I put the first coat on, I realized the mistake I made. I let it dry, I sanded it back with 800 grit, and then I put a second coat on it. But I was wanting it originally to be darker than this, but it's okay. There's a few blemishes, some of the the stain uh, settled a little bit or didn't cover perfectly. There's a little light spot right here in the front. It's not perfect, but um, you know, of course, the rest of the typewriter isn't perfect either. For instance, the spring on the paper bale, those springs are broken and I'm using a rubber band. That's just the way it is. It's an old machine. But hey, I like this. It's imperfect, but it's kind of beautiful at the same time. So during the process of building this cover, which took weeks and weeks, I did periodically use this machine, and I would use it sometimes without the cover in place because it was still being constructed, or other times I would use it just with bare wood. So I had a chance to use it for a while before it was actually finished, and uh, that's how I knew it was going to work, right? If there was any problem with it, I would have gone back and modified the design before I finished it. But uh, it really does give a nice appearance to this typewriter. It is certainly a unique typewriter now in terms of its its appearance and uh, I think it's going to provide good service for the machine it certainly doesn't uh, hurt it any it fits in the case just fine it does remind me though that this typewriter because of its age the platen is very hard the feed rollers and the uh, paper bale rollers are all needing to be replaced I'm going to probably be sending off all the rubber parts to JJ Short and Sons and get them resurfaced just to bring this typewriter up to where I think it should be as far as a useful creative tool. That being said, I think it's a great reminder again, as I said at the outset of this uh, program, that you take a machine like this that was destined for the scrap heap. It was going to be a parts machine, and now it is a custom usable typewriter. It's not yet up to where it should be. It still needs the rubber parts, right? But it's well on the way to being restored to usable condition, and that's the way I like these machines to be. I like to see the evidence of the provenance of it, right? The wear marks. And I'm okay with that. That's just, uh, it's an old machine. But I restore it to the point of usability. That's my main interest. Well, guys, I appreciate you staying tuned here, and if you have any questions about how to make a ribbon cover, a simple thing, um, drop them down below. I'd love to answer your questions and have a dialogue with you about this typewriter. And as always, stay creative, stay well, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.